Hello. Hello. How are you today? I'm good. How are you? I am fantastic, mate. It's an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your day. No worries. Well, we might as well get started straight out the bat. Um, I did want to ask, you've just been doing the whole European Summer Festival tour. How's that been? Like, how is that kind of playing the new album to massive, massive crowds? It's been great. I mean, um, as you said, it's the new album. Uh, we haven't really done it on festivals before, uh, which is, a, you know, it's a bit of a different setup than than the club touring. Uh, yeah. But it's working out really well. The new songs, they seem to, you know, people seem to like them very much uh, also in the live setting. So it's been fantastic. Good summer. <laughs> That's great to hear. Actually, just while we're talking about that as well, how do you feel? I didn't know you normally wouldn't do the festival tour. How do you feel that compared to a a club gig or a, a small music venue or a big music venue uh, have you it must be just a completely different atmosphere altogether it is yeah and uh you know i love the the, the open air festivals uh of course there are um, uh, more nerves involved because mm. at the festival anything can happen you know uh you can uh, um, sort of arrive with your gear being lost somewhere uh there can be a, a, a rainstorm anytime, you know, all that kind of stuff. It makes it more uh, uh, exciting in a way, not particularly uh, if you lose your gear, that's horrible. But, <laughs> you know, it's it's uh, it's an open air feeling. It's, it's uh, different. Uh, club tours, I love doing them. They're f they feel more safe because you usually have a sound check. You, you make sure everything is, is just trimmed and, and perfect. So... Um, so to festivals, there's an uh, element of surprise uh, always, you know, looming. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess it's good to kind of keep yourself on your toes uh, after what, be f just over 30 years of doing this now with the band, wouldn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I guess you still get to experience new things uh, along the way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, but it's an ongoing thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. That's it. Look. One thing I did want to ask, because I really love the uh, going back to the last album before we come up to the uh, tour of Australia, Sky Void of Stars. I love the album title. What was the inspiration yeah. for you? Because that's got so many different meanings. You know, it could be trapped inside, living in the city, you don't get to see the stars anymore. I, I don't know. what. How did you come up with that title? Because I, I find it's quite a captivating title. Yeah, and that's what I felt as well, because when I saw this line that I had written, it was in a lyric, um, and I felt like you know this is uh, a title. It's it's uh, it shouldn't just be a, in in a lyric as a, one of the the lines there. And mm -hmm. to me, it just captures a lot of feelings and and you know uh, not being able to navigate, uh, as you said, also um, being in a city. It's you rarely see any anything on. On the night sky mm. because of the the you know light pollution or whatever it is um so it's uh as you say you can you can sort of interpret it in many different ways and i like that and it looks great and it sounds great that's the the main thing for me for a title you know it should yeah. be easy to say and easy to remember <laughs> yeah 100 percent. like it's uh so many bands do the self-titled album and i can understand why they would it is hard to kind of go okay we've got a list of songs here that was a period of my life that I've poured my heart and soul into, but how do I title that? Um, yeah, so exactly. Sky Void of Stars. I just think that's that is just one of the best album titles I've ever heard. So, bravo! <laughs> Thank well <you>. done. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> how was it uh, recording this album? Because I know the last album came out during the pandemic. Uh, when did the yeah. writing process for this one start? Did it start around the pandemic time? Because I know a lot of writers. I you guess know, you guys had a lot of time on your hand. Yeah, exactly. And that's why we, you know, could actually make a new album quicker than usual, uh, mm. because all of a sudden I was just sitting in my home and with nothing to do. And uh, I sort of decided early on that, you know, I'm going to use this time to to try and be creative and not just feel sorry for myself. Uh, and all of a sudden, you know, well, it took a year or so, but yeah. Uh, there were songs enough for a new album and i thought you know this uh 
this opportunity doesn't come very often because usually we, we're touring. Uh, maybe after a touring cycle, you want to have a little bit of time off and maybe then you start writing. But now it was just like on to the next. And, and I tried to envision sort of what it would be like to be on stage again, having a, a brand new mm. album uh, with you and just go out touring. So I think the new album is a little bit more live oriented maybe and the, than the previous uh, couple of albums, but it just felt fantastic to be able to do it. And once we got to the recording phase, you know, things were opening up again. So it was um, a good feeling all around just being able to uh, because we traveled to Denmark to record the drums and it, yep. they had just opened the border uh, for traveling uh, and it was spring. So, it, you know, there was a, a good feeling in the air uh, for, for everything, for the future as well, for us as a band. So uh, good feelings all around. It's funny you say that because I did do a little bit of reading on when you record the album and a lot of bands that have released albums, you know, 2001, uh, 2001, 2021, 2022, beginning of 2023, like yourself. A lot of these albums have delved into, you know, mental health and dark times, and you've got a lot of brooding sounds coming on these albums. But the one thing when I was listening to this album was it did have a kind of uplifting spirit to it. Uh, so, and it makes a lot of sense. So you said right as you were about to enter the recording studio, there was a light at the end of the tunnel. The world was opening back up. And I, I don't know, I guess that's how the vibe got kind of captured in this album because I've listened to the album multiple times myself and I've always just kind of, it's a feel good. I always put it on bright, sunny day. It's just, it's a good album to listen to. I just kind of feel uh, rejuvenated after listening to it. That's great. Yeah. I mean, usually we, and we still do. I mean, we, we deal with dark uh, topics and, mm. you know, the music isn't exactly happy, but maybe there's a, a bit of that energy that we felt that, you know, just seeped into uh, every little detail of the record. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> but if it's working like that, I, mean, I think it's great because oh. that's how we felt, at least when we recorded it. You know, as you said, there's a, a light at the end of the tunnel now. And, you know, maybe uh, in the not too distant future, we can go out and promote this album because we feel so happy with it and, and how it started to, you know, uh, come together. And yeah. maybe that's in there somewhere. I like it. I like the thought of it. <laughs> do you have any favorite tracks from the album? I've got a personal favorite myself, but I'm curious if you do, or is it uh, kind of like trying to pick your favorite child and you can't really do that? Uh, well, in the beginning, it's it's a bit like that because once you're just finished with an album and you put so much uh, effort in every song, you know, uh, starting with uh, the songwriting and then, you know, uh, the recording and uh, everything. But once I think once you go out and play live, you can see and feel maybe a little bit more for certain tracks. I mean, this album is still kind of fresh. We haven't played mm. all of the songs yet, but I have a few favorites. I, I think the song Opalin, uh, uh, I feel that it's it's one of the best songs I wrote, you know, uh, that's my feeling about it. I like yeah. the, the opening track, Austerity. Uh, I like the, the long song at the end. It's called uh, No Beacon to Illuminate Our Fall. But, you know, I really love all of the songs, but there are a few standouts for me. Yeah, of course. And there's, I saw a little uh, a snippet online somewhere and I had to go back and re-listen to the song a couple of times and I can kind of hear it, but I want to know if it's true. Colossal Shade, does that have that Kiss influence that I've heard uh, people kind of whispering about online? Because I, I can kind of hear it now that I've listened to it a few times. Yeah, definitely. Um, I was just listening to uh, my favorite Kiss album, which is the Lick It Up album. Mm. Uh, and I was thinking about the riffs that they have on, on that record. They're very simple, but they're very, you know, uh, they have the ability to to get you in a kind of a groove yeah. uh, when you listen to it. And I thought maybe I should try and write something like that and just have it, you know, as a start of a song and see what happens. And, and I thought I found uh, eventually the kind of riff I wanted to go with. And, and after that, the song just sort of wrote itself. It was really fun because... I mean, the riff itself, the opening riff, it, it's not spectacular in any way, but it sort of made the song uh, all mm. by itself by just being there. And then you you could just um, sort of dress it up with different 
things for for every little part of the song and and it was like the backbone of the song so yeah cool experiment and, and thanks to kiss <laughs> it was made <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, it works. And I'm sure that that was the perfect song to play in an open air festival as well, because those big uh those big riffs that kind of fill sound yeah. and, and carry, that must have been amazing. Yeah. Did you did you it, get to play that live uh during the festival season? Oh yeah, we play oh. it uh, every every time because as you say, it's 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 made for the the stage, basically. It's uh it's a song that I think most people in in metal music can sort of you know like because yeah. it's uh it's very basic and and it deals with with some of the you know basic structures of of the the old metal that we all love so much <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a throwback <laughs> yeah it is <laughs> look um before i get on to uh the australian tour coming up and i can't believe it uh, last time you guys were here i believe is 2016 yeah, that, yeah i think that's that's the one yeah that, it's crazy to think that's They'll be eight years by the time you've come yeah. down here. How time flies. Uh, I still remember uh, the last time you guys came down. I just can't believe it was eight years ago. It's. I know we had that uh, pandemic in the middle of it, but uh, are you excited to come back? Yeah, very excited. Um, yeah. As you say, it's, you know, time flies. Uh, it doesn't feel like eight years because I remember uh, the tour we did uh, pretty well. You know, it was uh, good fun as it always is to be. In Australia, it's one of my favorite places to play, actually. And and uh, the only, you know, downside is that it's uh, it's a long journey, so you don't get to do it very often. Uh, but you know, I mean, we try and tour Australia at least once for every album. Yeah. Uh, but but the last, you know, the previous album, the Pandemic record, it it only had one tour, so we couldn't really fit anything in because we had a new album coming out. So <laughs> you know. Maybe we should do two tours for for Australia. Yeah, why not? Just do two yeah. rounds. Uh, I'm yeah, sure we'd exactly. be happy to have you down here, and it uh, gives you a bit more uh, opportunity to see the sights. Do you get to do much of the uh, touristy stuff when you come down to Australia? Not really. Uh, unfortunately, not because we were always on a tight schedule. Mm. Um, but I remember the first time we we came to Australia, we were part of a, a festival tour, kind of a big thing, and. Then we had like a day off after every show. So, oh, wow. uh, and you know, seeing it was our, our first time, it was nice to, to have that opportunity then to, to actually see some stuff and do some stuff and, and sort of just indulge because it's, you know, it's such a different place for us. Exactly. Yeah. I, I just was over in Europe myself early, uh, this year. So definitely coming back home, it's, uh, yeah, very different, very different. So it's nice to kind of get away and experience that. And you're coming down at a good time. February, sun's out, everyone's in a good yeah. mood, everyone's ready to go to shows. So uh, perfect time of the year to come That's down. That's perfect, here. yeah. Yeah, I um, can't wait. Oh, no, we're looking forward to having you as well. How was it as well? Uh, I believe this was the first release on Napalm Records, correct me if I'm wrong? No, that's that's completely true. That's completely. How did you find going to them? Because yeah. I've only ever heard good things. When anyone talks about uh, working with Napalm Records, they've I've nothing but good things to say about them. How, how did you find it with doing the new album? Was there the freedom? Were they just kind of really on board to do everything? Because it's I've just heard the best news from them. Yeah, they've been so far. They're, they've been really good. I mean, they have been promoting the album in a in a great way. Um, you know, and very supportive. Uh, so. Um, I have uh, nothing bad to say about them, really. Uh, it's uh, it's been a, a you know an easy ride uh, in terms of you know having touch with your record label and and yeah. see what they do for you and and stuff like that. So we got a, a, a really good relationship uh, from the get go. I think uh, actually the album was already recorded when we signed with them, but. Oh. Uh, they would probably have gotten us all the freedom anyway <laughs> because they they wanted to release it at least yeah of course exactly um and going back to what i was saying earlier i meant to ask it before was do you find it different because i've i've traveled around myself and you definitely have probably traveled more so than myself um going to different countries and different crowds do you feel different cities react differently to the music different countries react differently to the music or is it a are you just kind of happy to be out there? I mean, 
there are differences. Mm. And I mean, we have been going for so long now that we we know what to expect. Uh, certain crowds are more, you know, maybe not as outgoing. Uh, but then you know that these kind of crowds, they, they tend to, you know, listen with their eyes closed and just sort of dream away a little bit when we play. And, and, and some crowds, obviously, like in South America, they're very mm. cheerful, uh, very welcoming. So uh, we know what to expect and we love them all, you know. Uh, and also, I mean, it depends a little bit on, on what kind of set list you have. And uh, certain songs uh, obviously go go down really well with, with everyone. And sometimes you play something that's maybe not for this kind of crowd and, and it's more for, for another type of crowd, but it's, yeah. it doesn't matter. I mean, uh, I really come to, to a place in my life where I just feel like, you know, how blessed I am for, for being able to travel around the world and, and just play songs and, and see good reactions from people. It's, it's, uh, definitely a privilege. So I, I love it. Did you ever feel during the pandemic that there wasn't ever going to be a chance of it opening up again, or you were never going to be able to, I guess, travel overseas, like your Americas, your Australias, your South Americas. Did you think that was ever a real possibility at any point? Not really. I mean, maybe in the beginning when, when we did not know so much about what, you know, the fatality rate or whatever. Mm. Uh, but once you could see uh, and read about, you know, uh, what they were saying about it, that it's this kind of virus always gets, you know, milder over time, then I didn't really doubt it. I mean, of course, obviously, it's it's going to be closed down for as long as, as you know, the, the authorities say it's until it's safe to, to go somewhere. But yeah. I, I thought, you know, and also I, I I sort of doubt that that you can you can't really close down the world. It's not no. possible unless there is a virus that just kills everything uh, as soon as you get it. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, because I mean, we live in a, such a gl global uh, world now, where where it's possible to go and people want to go and. Uh, People want to explore, and and the tourism uh, sector is is you know, for certain countries, it's it's what they live off. And, oh, and, it's such a big industry! It's yeah. it's one yeah. of Australia's biggest industries. Yeah. So if you shut that down, you you get a lot of other problems in the world instead, probably. So you know, I was positive that it would open up eventually, but I couldn't say, of course, how how long a time it would take. But yeah. Yeah, well, they, and I've noticed, I don't know if you've noticed, hopefully you have, but I've noticed ever since going back to shows post-pandemic, the crowd, the crowds are coming out. The shows are selling out quicker down here, at least. They're, there's more people going to the shows. They're, everyone's more excited. I've never, I've been going to concerts for well, nearly 20 years now myself. And just in the last two years, I've never seen people happier, more passionate, and everything to go to these shows. Are you seeing that when you're up on stage looking down at the audience? Definitely, yeah. Yeah. I would say it's uh there is a difference now. And you know, I, I can feel it in myself as well. I mean, um mm. uh, not being able to take things for granted and and also getting it back. It's uh it's a certain feeling that I think crowds all over the world feel. And you know, just looking back on that grim bleak time that we all had and never want to go back to that <laughs> makes you just enjoy uh the freedom a little bit more i guess yeah i guess it taught us not to really take things for granted you kind of live in the moment i guess if you will yeah exactly yeah before i let you go today mate and once again thank you so much for your time and being here i do want to ask because i love this album i think this is one of the best albums you guys have ever done but this is album number 12 how are you keeping things so fresh after all these years? Is it's just it, it's really impressive. I've just got to say the writing, the artwork, the just the feeling of it all to kind of keep things so fresh and new. It's yeah. Th how thank do you do you. it? Um, I don't know. I don't have a, like a master plan for it, but uh, you know, <laughs> I keep. I th I'd like to think that I am uh, a person that, uh, you know, I have 
many ways to get inspired. I love being inspired. Uh, mm. I listen to all kinds of different music just to take in stuff that maybe I would miss otherwise. Uh, and I, I want to incorporate ideas from, you know, all over into our music to make it, you know, as you say, that it's still interesting for people. Mm. I mean, I don't want to get stuck on a, in a formula, which I know some people would say that we are, but you know, we, we have a sound that we like and, yeah. and we're just expanding on it at our own pace uh, with little small details every time that we try out and, and think that, oh, this is a cool new step for us, but maybe not everyone is hearing that because they think, oh, it sounds the same. But for us, it's inspiring. And hopefully that, you know, shines through a little bit when you listen to our, uh, you know, when we have released something new. So it's it's all about being just still hungry to deliver stuff that sounds great, you know. Yeah, it's almost like a, an excuse this analogy if it's a little strange, but it's kind of like cooking the, uh, you, you you know, the meal you like. You're just throwing different spices and sauces and flavors on it to make it a bit more interesting and different than the night before, I guess. Exactly. That's what you want to do because you don't want to, even if you love it, you don't want to eat it the same way every day. Exactly. Yeah. Well, mate, look, once again, thank you so much. Cannot wait. You guys are down here in February. Huge tour playing some of the best venues in the cities all over Australia. Look forward to having you here. Do you have anything you want to say to the people before I let you go today? Well, just that we're grateful to be able to come back. Uh, we're certainly looking forward to it. Um, I just hope people can, uh, you know, come out and, and rock out with us. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to be a great time. I look forward to seeing you then. Until then, um, I'll speak to you later. Cheers, man. Thank you very Cheers, much. Cheers, mate. Bye. Okay. Bye.